And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. Show. Don't forget about getting a copy of the book, man. I'm going to keep bugging you until every household in the United States and beyond has a dozen copies. I'm going to keep promoting it. You can get my book, Tom Molino, From Bondage to Baddest Man on the Planet, by uh, visiting a, a bookstore that sells uh, good books. Or check it out. You can go right up online right now. Right now. Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Get yourself a copy uh, right now. Don't don't wait. And speaking of right now, joining me right now uh, is uh, Boxing Hall of Famer, New Jersey Boxing Commissioner, and he's doing a weigh-in right now all at once, and I bet you he's chewing gum, too. My man Larry Hazard. What's up, brother? <laughs> no, I'm not chewing any gum, Billy. Oh, because I know you can I, handle that all. I know, you, I know you can chew the gum, do the weigh-in, do the show, you know, all that stuff at once, you know? Well, you know, what's that old saying? Jack of all trades, not the mud, right? <laughs> well, you're a master. That's for sure. You're a master. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thanks. I, I know you're uh, at the weigh-in, and uh, I, I really appreciate when you when you still take the time for your segment. But uh, let's talk about uh, the fight, the fight from this past weekend. Uh, there was actually a couple of decent fights on this card. Uh, I was a little surprised, but of course I'm talking about Floyd Mayweather against Andre Berto. We're trying to wrap up talking about Floyd Mayweather this week, and hopefully we won't talk about him again. Um, what was your thoughts on the fight? I mean, um, the numbers are coming out that they're bad. Not, nothing surprised me. I mean, I didn't think people were going to buy it. I thought it was a little more uh, entertaining than the Pacquiao fight. What, what did you think about the fight itself? Well, I wasn't surprised at the outcome. I um, I wasn't excited about the fight that much because, you know, I, I just happen to feel that Floyd Mayweather is, he's the best of his era. You know, he is the best. And I, I don't see uh, anybody out there that matches him, you know, talent-wise. And Berto... You know, I had the lowest regard in terms of some of the fighters, you know, that he could have fought that I thought would have been a bit more competitive. But I wasn't, you know, surprised. I I didn't give Burrow, I think I gave him one round. That was about it. He was a little bit more exciting than Pacquiao to a degree in that he tried to, you know, he tried his best to make a fight of it. But you could see that Floyd was... Head and shoulders above this guy, so I wasn't surprised. I, no. I, I I don't think that Floyd's going to fight again. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I really don't think anybody believes his his BS that it's over. It makes no sense to end at this point forty nine and zero. He might as well go one more and break the record, you know. But um, I I think that Berto was exactly what we thought. He was a guy that that Floyd knew a hundred percent he was going to beat. A uh, very one-dimensional fighter. I was a little surprised that Berto cut the ring off as well as he did. The problem was he didn't do anything when he did. You know, he he cut the ring off. He had Floyd where he wanted him, I would think, but then didn't let his hands go. There was a couple of shots he did land that seemed that, you know, kind of stunned Floyd a little bit, but he never followed up. Did you see that? Well, he may have, he may have surprised himself. You know, sometimes it's quite a... You know, it's almost like, be careful what you ask for. He, he, and I agree. He cut the ring off a few times, and uh, when, when he uh, arrived, he appeared that he didn't know what to do after he arrived. And uh, Floyd, of course, being Floyd, was, out, was able to outmaneuver. But, um, you know, uh, well, what can you expect? I think that, I think that he tried his best. But, you know, some of these guys, a guy like Berto, he's very limited in terms of his skill. And, uh, you know, once he shot his load, that was it. So I had him figured out early, and he started playing with him, you know, like he normally does. And uh, it was what it was, and uh, I wasn't surprised at all. I, I think that the fans, and, and generally, you know, we, we, we know this, and it was similar with Tyson. You know, uh, people bought uh, Mike Tyson uh, fights because of one of two reasons. They either loved him or hated him. And, and the same has to be said about Floyd. I mean, he has his, his loyal fans that, that stick with him no matter what. And then he's got the fans who just can't wait for him to lose. 
except it seems like all of them decided that enough is enough, that Floyd has been bamboozling them for a decade now, you know, cherry-picking opponents or at least at least picking opponents that, you know, match up to him perfectly. And they stayed away this time, Larry. And, and I, you know, I did predict, almost exactly what the buys were I, I predicted between five and six hundred thousand and uh there's some rumors that they might not even hit five hundred thousand um so that part of it didn't surprise me um but in a way i, I i'm a little i i mean what do you think you think that his diehard fans just said enough is enough or i mean because they obviously didn't reach in their pockets oh yes i i believe that that after, you know, after a while, that is what happened. Also, I, I had heard that they had, right up until maybe like Friday, like 3,000 feet. Yeah. That they were giving away off, you know. And you know, after a while, you know, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but not you know, how that goes all of the time. And why, a lot of people felt like, why should, why should you just give them $65? Right. So would you believe me? Would you believe that up until last Thursday, last Thursday, I had to be reminded that Floyd Mayweather was fighting Saturday. Now, you know that tells you something. This was last Thursday. I had to be reminded. Oh, by the way, you know Floyd is fighting Saturday. I'm saying, oh, that's right. You know what I mean? Well, I I was um, more excited. Would you believe that, Floyd? I was looking forward. Which I did see on True TV that Friday night, the fight between Cyclone Hodge kid, this Jesse Hart, and Aaron Pryor's son. I was looking forward to that fight. I was more excited about seeing that fight than I was about seeing Floyd Mayweather and uh, Berto. Uh, you, know you know, because. No, I was going to say, I agree, and, and a lot of people. Um, are, are are just totally now, it's almost like, you know, you, you, you're holding your breath underwater and you finally come up out of water and you take that first breath and, and now you start breathing again. And, and it's almost, that's the relief, that, that sense of relief. And, and a lot of people are hoping Floyd does stay retired because check it out. I mean, we got some good fights to, to look forward to this year. You know, in October, we got two good ones with Triple G, and uh, uh, David Lemieux coming up uh, a month from today, actually, in, in, in New York. Then uh, a week after that, you got Klitschko Fury. Then uh, after that, you got Cotto Canelo. I mean, those are three pay-per-view fights. Or I, I'm, I'm not so sure about the Klitschko fight. But uh, but the other two pay-per-views, I think, will surpass it. And I think there's a, a lot of interest. There's a lot of rumblings uh, about those fights. I, I Everyone I talk to, uh, they're really looking forward to those fights. Yes. Yes, I, I, and I happen to be one also. I just can't get up for Floyd anymore. I mean, and, and, and it's a good thing, and it's, I guess, for him, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, in that, and I think a lot of other people feel the same way, it's that you kind of accept the fact that there's nobody at his competitive skill level in that weight division. And so, you know, you know what's going to happen. You know what the outcome is. And there's nobody out there that really can get you excited about fighting him. Even a guy like Keith Thurman, some of those guys, you know, Thurman on his last outing, you know, kind of killed a little bit of that. I, I always thought that Thurman would be a good challenge for him, but I don't even think that Thurman would be much of a challenge for uh, Floyd Mayweather. Well, I think so I think that that's where, where it's been resolved. And most people just feel that there's nobody out there that's competitive enough to make a real fight out of with him. Yeah, but I think that I, I, I think that he's lost you know, I mean, yeah, he, he's he's arguably uh, one of the best, if not the best fighters of, of the last, you know, decade. Um, but I think that if he really wanted to go out and make a splash that he should have chose in his last couple of fights of his career those young guns, that Keith Thurman's, the Sean Porter's, the Kel Brooks, these are up and coming guys where he could make could have made an exclamation point saying, Yeah, not only am I yes. the best, here I am. I'm beating the future champions. I'm beating these guys that are yes. gonna take my place 
after I go off into the sunset. But instead of yeah. doing that, he picked guys that or I mean, really, I, I've looked at his last, you know, uh, six fights. They're all basically against the same style fighter, a wild guy that comes at you that's limited, um, that, you know, he can he can uh, pick off the shots. He can move a little. And even that, you know, we're always criticizing Floyd for moving and running. I think that he's lost a step with his legs because he doesn't run as much. He he stays stable and he and he waits for fighters to come to him before he moves. Well, I think what ha has happened with him uh, also is that Floyd's focus became more on maintaining the zero than satisfying the fan and really going out as a great great fighter. I mean. To say that you're great is one thing, but to, to prove it is another. So when you just talk and say that you're great, and you're not doing any of the things to show the public that you are, in fact, the greatest, that's another thing altogether. And like you said, if you had to pick some of those young guns and, and challenge them and made that statement that you so eloquently, you know, uh, espoused, then you would have a greater level of respect for them and you would give him a great deal more credit. But I think that because his focus, his focus was no longer on, you know, showing that he was the best fighter of his era. His focus became more of, you know, on 49 and 0. You know, he was, his focus became maintaining the zero. So that's how he started to select his opponents so that, you know, he would have an easier time winning. And he avoided some of the tougher guys. You know, great fighters, great fighters are not so much concerned about setting any type of uh, undefeated record. Great fighters are more concerned with demonstrating the great level of skill that they have and winning at the same time. I mean, you know, I don't think that they make their entire focus on maintaining uh, undefeated record. I just don't feel that way. Yeah, no. Because again, if you look at some of the greatest in boxing history, most, if not many, if not most, have have losses on their record. Yeah, no, you're you're a hundred percent right, and uh, I I think that he, you know, a lot of the. Uh, uh, you know, not I don't want to say uneducated, but I guess they are uneducated boxing fans that don't know the history of the sport. They bought into that. They believed that his greatness uh, was proven because he had the O and sprinkle in all the money he made. You know, so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully he does stay away, or if he does come back, it's for a substantial fight, like a guy we always talk about, Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, was a was a Hall of Fame fighter anyway, but he really cemented his legacy when he decides to come back and picks the the best guy of the bunch. You know, I mean, uh, if if Floyd comes back and says I want Triple G, now all of a sudden my my feelings for the right. guy skyrocket. You know, right. win, 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 lose or draw. Right. But um, on the undercard, uh, Bado Jack fought uh, uh, George Groves, and and I got that pick wrong. I, I actually thought that. Groves was going to win that fight. And I got to be honest with you, Larry. You know, I was very critical of Bedo Jack. Uh, but ever since he was knocked out quickly, I, I was ringside for that fight um, uh, up in uh, Turning Stone. Um, but uh, ever since that fight, um, he's gotten better. He looked really good yeah. in, in, in the fight against yeah, Groves. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. I think that he's a legitimate fighter. What do you think? Well, no, I agree. He, he, he is really improved. He's really improved. He looked good in that fight. And I think, um, you know, there are better days ahead for him. I think he's finally, you know, he's getting, he's got his mechanics down. And he, he knows how to take care of business now. So I expect big things from Bob Jack. You know. Yeah. He's a good start. Yeah, he, he was impressive. And I tell you, the fighter tonight... Uh, not that Jack's, uh, uh, you know, Bedo Jack and, and Groves wasn't a decent fight. First of all, they were decent fights, but I don't believe any of them were pay per view worthy. I, I really don't, you know. No, but, no, but, no, but, but, no. Uh, you know, at the end of the night, you know, the the Bedo Jack and George Groves fight was was entertaining. 
But the uh, but the Rocky Martinez and Orlando Salido fight surprised the hell out of me. I mean, both these guys. I mean, you know, they each got more mileage than I ninety five. You know, and uh, uh, they came out and and fought. And and I uh, again, I, I picked Rocky Martinez in that fight. And uh, for all intent and purposes, I I thought Salido deserved to get the W, and they end up giving it, uh, making that fight a draw. What were your thoughts? Oh, I I, I didn't have a problem with the draw because it was going back and forth. Those guys were high energy all the way, man. You know? I, I didn't have a problem with the draw. I had trouble with that. You know? I think I had Salido by... I, I think I had him by a point of You know? So, yeah. I thought it was a very exciting fight, though. It was a good fight. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, when I looked at it again, I'm saying to myself, well, you know, if you're judging the fight... Salito landed, it seemed to me, I didn't hear the stats, and I don't follow those stats because they're subjective, but um, it seemed to me Salito landed more punches, but when Rocky Martinez landed a punch, they were they seemed more significant. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so, so maybe that's what the judges saw, but I tell you, both of those guys have a lot of heart. At, at, towards the end there, I don't know what kept Martinez up. I, I thought he was ready to go, to be honest with you. Well, you know, those, they're, they're real fighters, you know what I mean? But I, I have a tendency to score in favor of the guys that land more blows. You know, most a lot of judges, they try to measure the effect of punches, but I feel that I can't, you know, I, I guess I just lean toward the guy that loads up on the target, you know? So I didn't have a problem with that. But like like you, you know, Martinez, you know, he fought it. He, he just showed the heart. You know, he dug down, and I mean, it was really, I enjoyed it. But I don't think, those are the type of fights that belong on free television. Those are not paid for fights. Right. No, I, I for, well, first of all, I mean, I, they were, you know, you could have, you could have elevated them to, to uh, HBO or Showtime, but definitely not pay per view. Um, which, which brings me to the, to the next thing. It was announced, it was made official, Timothy Bradley against uh, Brandon Rios. And, you know, when they first announced it, I was like, eh, ho-hum. But the more I'm, it's settling in, I, I think it's going to be a really good fight. And then they sprinkle in that Teddy Atlas is their, you know, the Teddy shape, Atlas. You know, was, yeah. I, you know, I... I you know, I I, I got to be honest, man, and I don't know, maybe maybe you got to be careful of, of how you answer this, but you know, Teddy Atlas to me, I I I always thought that he would have made a great commander in chief of USA boxing. I think he's just just the way he is and his style and and the way he's got to be, uh, you know, Mister I control everything. I, I thought that maybe he, you know, for an amateur program, he's the right guy, but as a pro trainer. I really was never impressed with him. Never, you know. And, and what he did to Povetkin, breaking him down and trying to teach him. It took Povetkin another two years to, to get back on the winning track. Now, all of a sudden, Timothy Bradley, who's an established multi-division world champion, drops a guy that he's been successful with and takes on Teddy Atlas. I, you know, yesterday's topic was, is he going to help him or hurt him? I, I personally think that Teddy Atlas is going to hurt Bradley. What, what's your thoughts? Well, it remains to be seen. I can only say this, that I like Teddy. I like Teddy Evans. Um, I like I like boxing guys, okay? So uh, I think he talks a little bit too much during the telecast, but, you know, that's his style. But, um, you know, you have to look at, you have to look at track records. You know, he had a, a level of success with, with uh, Michael Moore, I think I think most of that, I think the theatrics kind of outshone everything else. And, um, you know, I don't know what happened to him and Michael, but he was with Shannon Brake, and, of course, he was with Perfection. So, you know, I, I don't know. I think Teddy has a tendency of trying to break fighters down and start all over from scratch his way. Right. I think that that could be a mistake sometimes with training fighters. Um, I like guys like Eddie Punch and Emmanuel Stewart who would take guys and make them better at what they have. And I think that's a better approach than trying to break a fighter all the way down and reteach him. You know, that, that could be very, a very difficult task. 
you know, you take a guy who's got a certain level of skills and just improve on what he has, find his strong point, and improve on those strong points, and encourage him and, you know, give him a level of confidence. Uh, and I think you, you can find a, a greater level of success that way. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what he does with Timothy Black. I can say this much, though. I I often have to take a second look at fighters who, you know, they go for so many years and they they reach a great level of success with it, with one trainer and then all of a sudden they change. You know, I have to question that, but, you know, who knows? I, you, you don't know what happened, but at least... I know Timothy's trainer. Um, he hasn't had anything nasty to say. He's been very cordial. He's a real gentleman, the way he speaks of the fighter. So I, I, I have to commend him for that. You know, she doesn't seem to show any level of anger, anything, outwardly, anything. No, so he, we'll he, see he doesn't, and it seems like it was a decision because it also seems like Timothy Bradley didn't want to get rid of him either. It just seemed like it was somebody else's decision. I also agree with you 100%. You know, great trainers that don't now, if a trainer starts out with a kid as an amateur and builds them all the way up, that's a different story. But of the great yeah. trainers that take on a fighter that's established and help fine-tune his, his, his qualities and attributes that he already has, that separates a good trainer from a trainer that, you know, doesn't have that ability. I always use my friend Kevin Rooney as, as an example. You know, he was great with Mike Tyson, but I used to go to that gym all the time and see all kinds of guys, tall guys, skinny guys, short guys, fat guys, everybody doing the same stuff. You know, they're all bobbing and weaving. You know, that's all he taught. No matter yeah. what yeah. you yeah. had, you yeah. were learning the bob and weave style, you know. And sometimes I wonder... Uh, if that's the case with Teddy. But, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you this. You know, um, Ma um, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather have pretty much dominated uh, being uh, the top guys in, in the sport of boxing over the last decade. And uh, for all intent and purposes, even if they both uh, fight again, uh, and I don't mean each other, I, I do believe they are going to fight each other, but um, you know, there's a lot of young talent out there, Larry, and we've talked about it a lot. But I don't believe that they've actually had the chance uh, to, to really, you know, be showcased and show their stuff because of Mayweather and Pacquiao. The, the demand was so, they separated themselves from so, everyone else so drastically that promoters and television networks just wanted to focus on the big money guys. Now that these two guys are, for all intent and purposes, out of the picture, do you think this this class of young talent, which we clearly have in the sport of boxing, is going to be given the opportunity to uh, to shine? And if so, do you think that this is what we've been waiting for? This kind of group of fighters that could actually take boxing back to where we want it to be? Well, I think that's that's what the BBC, I believe, is doing. That's what I see. Um, you know, the BBC. This is where you're, you're getting a chance to see a lot of that untapped young talent that's out there. You're getting a chance to see it for free. You're, 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 you're becoming familiar once again with the names of fighters. You know, you're talking about fighters. You're looking at, you're rushing home, turn on the TV to see fight. You know, the talent is all out there. Um, they tell me that Al Heyman and his group, they have over 300 fighters signed. And then, you know, they parcels out to uh, some of these major promoters looking for venues for these guys to keep them busy, give them exposure. So the very thing that you're talking about, that's what I see, that's what I see this PBC doing. And, uh, you know, you know my feelings about that. You know, I, I, I certainly think that they've been Good for boxing. Matter of fact, this show that we're having down here uh, in Atlantic City, I don't know for sure, but I do believe that, you know, some of these fighters are affiliated with, it seems like everybody's affiliated with with that group in some way, shape, or fashion. You know, and uh, they're looking for outlets 
bracelets for these guys to stay busy. Because if you got 300 fighters, you know, you have to get, keep these guys busy. And so there's got to be a wealth of talent there somewhere. And um, this is what the boxing fans want, and this is what they should get. So I agree with you 100% there. I believe that the next group of superstars in boxing, now that Pacquiao and Mayweather are kind of on the downside, I think that's where we're going to see them. We're going to see them on Fox Network. We're going to see them on Fight for NBC. That's where they're going to emerge from. Yeah, but the only the, the only problem I see, and it's becoming clearer with the PBC. I agree that you know he's got a lot of fighters, and and they have their their uh, uh, minor league, so to speak, with some of the undercards, and as he's building some of the younger fighters up. Um, but what I'm seeing is, uh, di uh, you know, division, more division in the sport. In other words, if you're not with PBC, those other fighters, like let's say Terence Crawford. You know, he's an up-and-coming uh, champion. He, he fights, uh, you know, we, we both love him. He's not part of PVC, you know, and that means, is he going to be the guy that's left out? Is he going to be the guy that doesn't get to fight? You know, I just want to see more uh, crossover fights. You know, Al Heyman guys versus somebody else, you know, uh, whether they fight under the PBC banner for that night or not, that's the last piece of the puzzle we need to make it work. Otherwise, this time next year, we're going to be saying, man, we need something to get boxing back going because if they don't start turning uh, big-time profit, I had predicted by May, um, you know, it, it's it's not going to be able to continue. They they have to get out of the red, man. They're, they're deep in the red. You know that. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, what you're saying makes a whole lot of sense, and so, you know, and it's not perfect, so let's hope. Let's hope that it hope that it happens. But you make a very good point because there are there is a lot of talent out there that's not a part of the PPC. And uh, you don't want to see them, you know, bounce by the wayside either. Right. So that that needs to be fixed. And it seems like, you know, we, we just can't find that happy medium in boxing, but we have to keep trying. But I think the PPC is a spot. But like you said, I hope that there's some crossover to take place at some point very soon. Right. Or we're going to be right back where we started it, again in another year or so. Exactly. And it might even be, it might have, what scares me is it might even be worse. I mean, you know, it's like the, the North has to play nice with the South. I mean, uh, that's almost like what it has yeah. to, you know, yeah. I mean, everybody's got to play nice. If not, it's going to be a feud, you know, but uh, Larry, yeah. I know you're busy and uh, I appreciate it, my man. And uh, good luck with the event tomorrow night. And uh, we'll be okay. looking forward to you next week. Well, I look forward to it. So it's not really, you know, it's not really putting me out of the way. I, I look forward to this segment every week. Well, we look, forward, you know. we look forward to having you, my man. And uh, we'll be looking forward to having you next week. Okay, Billy. All right, Larry, you hang in there, my man. Okay. All right, take care. That's my man Larry Hazard, working hard at the weigh-in, but still taking the time to uh, uh, give us his thoughts uh, on uh, on all the stuff that we threw at him. And uh, the guy's always on. He's always dead nuts on. Hey, listen, I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, Dax Khan will uh, stop by, and uh, I think he's going to give me his three favorite fights this week. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Stop.